proper wrist technique is essential for great piano playing because when you are playing with proper wrist technique, you're able to move around the keyboard with freedom. You sound way more musical with phrasing and dynamics, and you can bring a level of detail to your playing that's really not possible without proper wrist technique. Now, if you don't have proper wrist technique, one, it could lead to injury and nobody wants that. Two, you won't be able to play very musically or expressively. And three, it will be really difficult to change hand positions. So today I'm gonna to tell you exactly what you need to do to have proper wrist technique and make sure that you stay tuned to the end of the video because I'm gonna give you three of my favorite exercises. And two of them are ones that I have never shared on the channel before. So the most basic positioning for your wrist is called the neutral position. This is the first element of proper wrist technique that you wanna make sure that you master. We want our wrist to be parallel to the ground. So when your fingers are resting on the keys, your wrist is nice and flat. It's not down low and it's not up high. It looks like this on the piano. Now, in order for our wrist to be in that neutral position, we have to make sure that we are sitting at the proper height. And sitting at an incorrect height is one of the biggest mistakes that I see adult piano players make when it comes to technique and posture at the piano. If you don't have an adjustable bench, I would highly recommend that you get one because sitting at the proper height is really the foundation for all of the proper techniques at the piano. And if you're not sitting at the proper height, it's like a chain reaction because it can lead to improper wrist technique, improper shoulder position, tension at the piano, and it will really prevent you from sounding good. You'll know you're sitting at the proper height if when you go to rest your hands on the keys, your elbow makes a 90 degree angle. If you're sitting too low, your elbow is going to make a V shape. And if you're sitting too high, your arms are going to be too straight. And none of these positions are going to allow for you to remain in your neutral wrist position. Now, once you're comfortable with your neutral wrist position, we're going to work on flexibility so that we can float off the keys and sink into the keys. But we're always coming back to that neutral position. And so these three exercises that I'm going to show you are going to help you get really comfortable with those motions so that they become second nature and so that you don't have to think about them as much. Now I'm going to dive in and show you these three exercises, but really quickly, I just wanted to say thank you so much for those of you that comment on the video. For those of you that don't know, I started this channel originally for my private piano students. I wanted to make videos that would help them work on the practice techniques that we talked about in between their lessons so that they could have another tool to draw upon if they got home and didn't know how to practice. And since then, the community has grown. But my purpose is still the same. These videos are for you. These are to help you become the most beautiful piano player that you can. I'm all about practicing effectively and efficiently and not wasting time and really only giving you the information that you need. So thank you again to those of you that comment on this video. I love hearing from you. I love hearing where you are. I love hearing what you need help with. And I love knowing if these videos are in fact helping you. All right, let's dive in to these exercises. So the first exercise that I'm gonna give you for proper wrist technique that will help you gain flexibility is this up down motion with your wrist. And what you're going to do is you're going to sit at your piano and I want you to make sure that you tune into your breath while you're doing this exercise. You're going to take a big breath in. You're going to bring your wrist from the top of the piano and you're going to exhale and allow the wrist to drop. And I mean really drop and exaggerate that. And then you're going to float up, come down again, and you're just really going to work on this up down motion. You want to let it be graceful and don't force it. So of course we never want to have any pain when we're practicing these exercises. You're just going to focus on exaggerating the motion so that ultimately you get really used to this idea of floating off the keys and sinking into the keys. This next exercise is really going to help you with a side to side wrist motion. And this one I've never shared on the channel, but for this exercise, what we're going to do is we are going to put our third finger on a key and it doesn't matter what key you can put it on any key that you want. And we're going to hold that key down and keep our third finger on that key. And we're going to hinge at the wrist and we're going to kind of slide to the left and slide to the right. And we're going to play our thumb and then our pinky and our thumb and our pinky. And this is really helpful in getting this side to side wrist motion going that will ultimately help you with large jumps and really spacious arpeggios and voicing and so many other things. But it's a really great exercise to get you in touch with that side to side motion and to ultimately help you with your wrist flexibility. All right, the next exercise is a rotation exercise. And what we're going to do for this exercise is we're actually going to start with our hands by our side. You don't even need to be at your piano for this. I just want you to let your arms hang loosely at your sides. Pretend like there's a doorknob on the ground and like you are twisting that doorknob open and closed. So we're really working on that rotation motion. And once you've been doing that for a few seconds, you're going to lift your arms up and do the same thing as though there was a doorknob on the ceiling. And you're really just going to get comfortable with this rotation motion. Then you're going to put your hand parallel to the keys and you're not necessarily going to play any notes, but you can keep that rotation motion. And then you 
can kind of work on maybe minimizing it a little bit so it's a smaller rotation. Now, if you do each of these exercises for 20 seconds before you sit down to practice, you're going to be able to tune into your wrist. You're going to make your wrist more flexible, and this is going to set you up for that proper wrist technique. And each time you encounter technically demanding things in your music that might require a different kind of wrist technique or a different kind of wrist motion, you're already going to have a muscle memory of these different motions that you've been practicing. And so it will be much easier to draw upon them when you need them in your pieces. Now, if you have not already gotten a copy of my free practice planner and guide, go ahead and grab that. It's in the description of this video. This is a guide that's going to help you get really clear on the steps that you need to take to create a perfect practice routine for you, for your schedule, for your life, and for your goals. And you can grab that in the description below. And if you're looking for a really deep dive into more explanation of wrist technique, check out this live stream that I did a couple of months ago. 